Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Xenonauts 2 Early Access Milestone 4. As today, we're right into it. We've got Exo on site, locked and loaded with our new Electro Shot pistols. And uh, as I recall, this should just be a fairly simple Scion op. Then again, I said that last time and we had a bunch of tanks show up, so I guess we'll see. Here we go. Urban area. No enemies in immediate view. Tucked in corner, so check right. We have this walled off garden. We've seen that a few times. So we'll make immediate use of that to aid our advance. Yeah, see, like, there are slight variations. They don't recycle maps wholesale, but they definitely use a sort of uh, part and parcel system similar to XCOM 2, just with larger plots. You know, XCOM 2 was really good about having both large and small POIs that would be randomly placed across the overall map. Whereas they do that to an extent with Xenonauts 2, but, but you can definitely recognize the chunks more easily. You know, they're a lot less granular and a lot less random. For example, we've seen this central warehouse several times now. That plus the building off to the side, the uh, residential. Both of those, I believe, were in our first Andron encounter, the one where we lost Walrund. Though I don't believe in that case we had the walled garden to the right, and we may or may not have had this pickup truck. Let's go ahead and punch out that front wall. Okay. Front room looking pretty clear. We'll have a team of four push up, clear that building next round. Move to get someone set up on the roof. Two towards center, just to keep an eye on things. And yeah, yeah, we'll have the rest start moving to clear far right corner and then the warehouse ahead of us. I see some shipping containers off on right, so that might take an extra turn or two to clear. Hold. Ooh, that was a weird sound. Garage door, maybe? Peek. Ugh. Yeah, that's going to be a pain. All right, let's go ahead and punch a hole in the warehouse just to get a peek inside. No immediate threats in view. Ah, but there we go. Right, right. We've got two Scion Elite. Oh, nice. 
Very solid start with that Electroshock Pistol. That was almost 50 stun. Very awkward angle. But let's toss some support trips away. Ah, close. That one's got five points left. First target out. Don't think we've got enough stun bombs on tap for the other, but... Let's at least lock it down. Nice. Oh, actually. Okay, so 52 points left. Thirty six. Push on left. Sect on out back. We'll hold here. Sect on's an easy cap next round. We just don't want to overextend. Hold. Right, right. That's fine. And go for cap. Ah, okay, it was the garage door. Noted for the future. Oh, wow, okay. Well, that... That was much less impressive than that first opener. I keep forgetting we just go over walls now. That is something I need to practice, is um, getting used to the new movement patterns prompted by those jetpacks. Target out. Yeah, so that'll be the uh, the main goal for this particular outing. I don't think we're in for much of a fight here, so. So instead, we will use it to practice jetpacking around. Plus, of course, you know, continue field testing the rest of our new gear. For example, I did go ahead and lighten all of our loadouts for this one. Reduced everyone down to just one spare battery for their laser weapons which in many cases allowed for an extra electroshock grenade. The main exception being the three who have electroshock pistols, since those are, in fact, double the normal stun gun weight.
Back room clear. That should drop him next round. Lost count there, but I think he was in single digits. Ship door. Oh, wow. Okay, well, go for cap. Might still have points banked, so be wary. Sekton out. Edge of map secured. Clear warehouse. Left side clear. Right side clear. Sweep shipping yard. Clear. We still have some blind spots in far back right, but let's... Oh, and there we go. Scion Elite and a Mentark. Hold on, corner. Scion could potentially come in through that side door, so let's... Let's block line of sight. Nice, nice. Roving up on rooftop. Just to keep an eye on things. Hmm. Didn't think he'd have actual visual on the Mentark. That might be an issue. It's hard to gauge line of sight when it comes to the elevation levels. Like, I thought he'd be far enough back on the rooftop. But, you know, given, of course, the viewing angle with the camera, it is largely guesswork. Though I guess I could have checked line of sight in advance. So that's really on me. We'll use the warehouse for cover. Start pushing towards ship. Just need to be slightly cautious in case we have anyone left in that that building in back center. Yeah, that should be good. Right, right. Oof. But minor. Go for caps. Yeah, long term, we'll probably try to get all our snipers in those stealth suits. Though I suppose it will depend on exactly how they work. That'll presumably make it slightly safer to use our snipers as spotters, as I am wont to do. Nice.
That'll do. Another successful cap for our new electroshock pistols. All right, let's bring you back down. Oh, wait, wait. Gosh darn it. I really thought you'd just jetpack hop off, but okay. That's fine. That is why we're field testing this stuff, so we can get used to the weird little idiosyncrasies. Let's start clearing this last warehouse. I mean, I, I feel like it's pretty clear, but we're already here. Yeah, we'll have to weather one more shot from the Mentark. But Roman should be able to tough it out. Hold. Oh, nice. Shields out, but no damage. So all in all, I will call that a win. Ah, fair enough. We got this. Soften. Nice. Yes. One more tap should do it. Mantark out. Though I do now realize I blocked the door. You know what? We'll just punch out the wall. Not that it really gets us much farther, but, you know. Move up on left. Yeah, we're fine. As suspected. But still, better safe than sorry. Hold on, roof. We'll have our snipers covering the approach as we 
finish regrouping on door. All clear. Group up on edges, prep for breach. Doors borked. We uh, trashed it with grenades, but we'll just hug the sides. Guardian armor up front. Make sure they're the first thing the enemies see if they push. That and the snipers, I suppose, but that's a necessary risk. Cyan tried to push, but snipers did their jobs. Go for cap. Teleporters off on sides. Interesting. I would have actually expected center room. Target out. Ah, oversized engine room. Okay. I, uh, I do appreciate that they have the different layouts on ships, too. That's that's another thing that keeps you guessing. Sect on. Oh, one point left. Come on. Target smoked. Lockdown. At least as much as possible, given that we did, in fact, punch out a wall. Actually, we might be able to plug that gap. Robomsky's right over there. Bring the snipers down. Okay, breach. Officer in sight. Easy cap.
Oh, come on. We could have used that. And we're good. Yeah, that was a nice easy one. Though, uh, as always, uh, you know, a few things we took away from it. In particular, some of the intricacies of jetpack maneuvering. Pretty standard payout. Modest gains, a few medals. I think we, uh, I think we actually capped every enemy possible. All right, come on back. Ooh, and here we go, ship three. Um, oh wow, that's an unescorted abductor coming in for a retaliation on Phoenix. Gutsy move. Actually, how is Phoenix Wing? Oh, wow. Okay. Might have to go manual. No, no, we're good. Target out. No losses. And we are seeing here what may be an exploitable pattern in how the auto damage is distributed. We'll keep that in mind moving forward, but for now, we have yet another crash site on the board. Give me a sec. I'll take care of the usual post-op bookkeeping, and then we will get those scions out of our sight. And we're back. Sadly, uh, electroshock pistol still in the works, so we're going in without... But, as we saw last time, we should be just fine. Though we might have to worry about tanks again. The last Scion Abductor had three. But, really, I mean, at this point, I feel like those are kind of old hat. Still a threat, just not as terrifying as they were when first encountered. Oh, yep, there we go. Uh, three enemies in immediate view. Tank ahead, Sekton above, Scion off to right. Let's burn him down. But yeah, yeah, you get the idea. Uh, a lot of the anxiety I was feeling early on was from the fact that all of these were unknown or unfamiliar threats. I was still getting a feel for things, but at this point... We've encountered these particular guys so many times, I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on it. And of course, our constant flow of upgrades certainly don't hurt. Cover cleared. And cyber disk form added. Scion next. We'll go for cap if possible, but we might have to kill. We'll leave it to RNG. Cap it is. Target out. 
and uh, Sekton. We still have the Sekton on left, but let's let's go ahead and clear some blind spots real quick. Front room clear. Sacked on out back. Hold on wall. Let's get a better look out back. Okay, Scion out back as well. Second floor clear. But I did overextend just slightly. Alright, let's lay down some cover on left. Nice, nice. Shoot, I was really hoping you'd be locked down by now. That'll do. Sayonara. Oh, shoot, right, we still have a Sekton up top, too. Man, I uh, I completely blanked on that guy. All right, just get out of LOS. Hold. Nice, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Without Scion support, these guys just don't pack much punch. Take him out. Nice. Go for cap. Target out. Clear blind spots. Looks good. Now the other. Well, not, not capping that one. Nice shot, Rook. And push up. Though, be wary, we... In theory, we still have at least two tanks out here. I think three is standard. Like, classically, every time we've seen Cyberdisks show up, I think it's always been in threes. At least in Milestone 4. Though I do dread the day when we inevitably encounter upgraded Cyberdisks. Apparently they are coming. Scion way in back, too far out to pose a threat, but we'll position for next round.
Oh, right. Sorry, bud. Come on up. Okay, hold. Scion moving up. And someone is bleeding. Push up. Go for cap. Or kill. That works. Oh, and... There's our bleeder. I don't think we did that. That must be an armed friendly I didn't hear. Oh, sacked on. Sect on out. Exterior clear air. Leaders too far out to pose a threat, so we'll just push up for now. Oh. Mayhaps I spoke too soon. Let's get some guys up top. Ah. I was hoping for a suppress. But no big. Hold. Nice. Less nice. Also Mentark. Gotta be careful with those shields. They're getting pretty thin. Target out. Yeah, I anticipated one shot, but I was hoping you would stick and move. One shot into the shield, then go for cover. But obviously that is not how it played out. So yeah, we'll have to um, be wary with what we've got left.
Nice. Position for next round. Remember that we do have vertical movement. Oh, well, that... Alright, fair enough. Shield out, but no bleed over. That will make our push on the ship ever so slightly more problematic, though. Speaking of which... Approach seems clear, but hold on, wall. We need to make sure we don't have any tanks on our flank. Come on, Rook. Let's get you back on the board. Hold. Clear target. Oh, go for cap. Nice. Thank you, Bowman. And push plateau. We're not hearing any tank sounds out here, which... Which Im implies we don't have any out here, but at the same time... Actually, can tanks die in the crash? We've never seen it happen before, but... But that doesn't mean it can't. We've definitely seen Servitors and Androns die uh, during Rex. Let's start pushing the ship. See if that door still works. Lovely. Okay, good. That does make this a whole lot safer. We're obviously not going to breach until we've got everyone regrouped, but... But this way we've got people right next to the ship, so that'll give us a better... A better assortment of audio clues as to what's going on inside. There does seem to be, like, an ill-defined hearing range. Which is why we get inconsistent feedback on audio cues. I'm just not sure exactly where the cutoff is. Given that it is apparently a mechanic, it would have been nice to have gear that could actually exploit it. Although it was cut out pretty early in the series, the original Jagged Alliance games did have like listening devices and such to help you better guess at where your foes were and what they were trying to do.
Oh, look at that. We do have more out here. We'll go for Cap. Though that may require throwing everything we've got at her. Really comes down to the RNG and the swing on those electro bombs is pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, RNG is not playing nice on this one. Soften? Eleven points left, I think. Out of stun bombs, but smoke might do it. All right, back on left. Just hold on exterior. Yeah, it looks pretty clear out here. I think it might just be the officer left outside. We'll snag them next round, then regroup on door. Looks like a three-door interior setup. Double wide in center, singles on sides. We've dealt with one of those before, if I recall. Main telepad was center behind the double. Hold. Mantark. And officer out. Let's just double check. Yeah, I'd say we're good. Let's wrap this up. Hey, Bibu. What's up, baby? <laughs> hey, guys. You know, that that doesn't make it easier for me to record. Thankfully, we're not doing anything dangerous here, but just be aware, <laughs> I currently have a Kaiser sitting smack dab in front of the screen. Oop, nope, there he goes. He's just chilling out off to the side now, staring out the window. Ooh, lots of activity. Just hold on door. We'll uh we'll finish regrouping before we go in. We do still have two perspective tanks, but we are definitely not hearing them moving around. 
Also, this ship is suspiciously un-Swiss cheesed. They are going ham on those teleporters, though. Breach. Side room clear. Door is open. Hold here. Actually, hold on. Other side. Shoddy's on central door. And then I guess rest just kind of group up behind. We'll secure pads next round. Then probably hold for a few rounds. Thin out the remaining crew a bit before we push up. Reach. Left side clear. Engine room clear. All right, lock down. Hold on doors. Teleporting does not trigger reaction, but opening doors does. So this is an ideal place for us to camp out for a few rounds. Mentark. Oh, hi there. Mentark out, as is our door. <laughs> Breach. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> okay, you know what? I think we just found out what happened to our missing tanks. Which I guess also confirms they can, in fact, die on impact. Scion non-com, go for cap. Target locked. Might still have more in blind spot, so let's be wary. Nope, we're good. Target out. Push up, position for final breach.
Yeah, yeah. See, so that would uh, that would imply standard issue is three cyber disks per Scion loadout. We had one active out front and two that died side by side here. Though it would be easier to parse if they actually had like a visual model for uh, cyber disk and servitor wreckage on the battlefield. Like, it's there. It can be interacted with. You can inadvertently destroy it with collateral damage. But for whatever reason, the devs have decided to keep it invisible for the time being. Nice. Sight friendly, but no real harm done. Breach. And easy cap. Target locked. Target shot. And target barreled. Nicely done, Raiders. Come on back. Yeah, not much to really say on this one. This was a nice, smooth op. Modest gains, a couple of medals. I see Epic Seymour has hit Colonel. Congratulations. Decent amount of loot. Including all three Cyber Drones, which we can just sell at this point. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Hopefully enough to push us up towards a mill, though. Though we are getting a bit light on Alloy and Elenium, so we'll have to be careful there. Two days left on our current project. I think we're done with the current wave, so you know what? Let's let's move up the clock. Just until something happens. Exo stocked on electroshocks. And here we go. Advanced alloys. Much of the research work conducted on alien alloys thus far has been centered around increasing their mechanical performance, i.e. the hardness, toughness, and impact resistance of the substance. This perhaps implies a lack of creativity, for it appears the aliens have also mastered exotic alloy variants that combine the strength of hardened alloys with the flexibility of fabric. Such materials could prove enormously useful to our war efforts. The secret to this behavior appears to be a metallic alloy that has an extremely low melting point. It is therefore liquid at room temperature, creating a suspension of alloy molecules that lock together if compressed, temporarily forming a crystalline structure. When placed between sheets of watertight woven fabric, this creates a flexible fabric that will instantly harden if struck by a projectile. Once those forces have dissipated, which only takes a few moments, it will once again resume its pliable liquid form. While I suspect many uses for these remarkable new alloys will become obvious with time, the clearest application is currently in our personal armor. Despite our test subjects reporting that their protective equipment unexpectedly hardening while they are in motion is actually a rather painful experience, the resulting bruises and soft tissue damage seem rather insignificant compared to the alternative. Analysis suggests this material can offer roughly 70% of the protection provided 
by a hardened alloy plate of equal thickness. This means it will not replace our existing solid plating, but complement it, finally allowing us to add meaningful armor to areas where rigid materials cannot be used. Which puts us within spitting distance of the Colossus Battle Suit and Tier 3 Interceptor. Plus, slightly more immediate access to actuator modules, reinforced vehicle armor, and reinforced interceptor plating. What is the actuator module? Alright, and then for our new project, um. <laughs> I can't help but notice the Colossus Battlesuit has no description, so that might might just be another placeholder, but... You know what? Yeah, at this point, we'll just start working our way up. Let's go ahead and finally clear Reaper. That's just a three-day investment at this point. And then... Actuator Modules... The actuator module uses a lightweight exoskeleton constructed from alien materials to significantly enhance the strength of the soldier wearing it. Okay, so they do in fact have something to help with our loadout problems. Though the question now is, is this something we can just toggle onto our existing armor? Or do we actually have to clear space in our backpacks for it? Also, the, uh, the plus 20 strength, although significant, is partially offset by the weight of the actual module itself. Well, we can definitely afford it, so we'll go ahead and add that to our queue over at EXO. And then reinforced plating. Oof, yeah, that's... That is definitely a more significant investment. I think we can afford that, though. I'll just have to move some things around. That's it. We'll uh, hit the pause button for now. I'll get the usual bookkeeping taken care of, and we will pick up here next time. I know the aliens have uh, at least one or two more surprises for us in Milestone 4, but I gotta say, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about our chances. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Eerie V23, Revenant, Aloise, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracid, The Egon Altar, Excelsior, Goat Leave, James Treme, Kazor, Mark GMs, and Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Farum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the Patreon, the PayPal, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.